Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft. Chapter six, we are on the final stretch, and to be honest with you, I could not be happier with color or fit. That color, that is a perfect complement to that knife handle, but two, look at that, what a fit. But here's the coolest part, nothing we've done thus far has been difficult. That's exactly right. Now, chapter six, we're gonna repunch our holes, punch through our welt and our back panel, add that beautiful white stitch line, add a strap, a rivet, and a snap, and we are done. And again, just love the whole look there. Really happy with our progress. So, anything I use in this video, all of our dyes, liquids, tools, leather, weaverleathercraft.com, or check below, we've got links there, gonna take you straight to our website. So let's do this. Let's step over here and repunch our chisel holes. Now, when we're setting our chisel, our final chisel, this is one place we've really got to take our time and be very careful because we've got almost a half an inch of leather here we're working through. Now, we've pre-punched our face, so really we're just going through two-thirds, but we've got to make sure we take our time here. Speed, not the point. Outcome. All right, so let's do this. Over here, we could always use a hand drill to go through this, but that's going to be tough to get that bit to go straight through. Secondly, we could use a drill press. That cures that problem. Got one, love one, and use it. But the point of this video is we can make this sheath on our kitchen table. So we're going to use a chisel. Now again, we could go with multiple tine, but we're going to go one tine at a time. And I know, you're th and I, me too, that's going to be tedious. Well, first off, we're not really going that far. But secondly, again, outcome is what we're looking for. But with this, and let's see if I can get a good shot here. See if I can get this lined up in the camera. In a perfect world, I could go straight through this and hit the back each and every time. The problem is, not a perfect world and I'm not a perfect leather crafter. What I don't want is to come out in an angle. That way I literally will come out of my bevel and I really don't want that. But also too, I know, or I mentioned, we don't have a groove line on the back because it would be impossible to hit that. So without a groove line, our stitch looks pretty good. We don't see a groove line and then a stitch line. That would look very unprofessional. You know what? Unfinished. So no groove line on the back, but our stitch is going to be pretty clean. So let's do this. Let's take our chisel one time. I'm going to drop that in my first hole. Now this is going to feel a little odd, but what I'm going to do is lean this out just a little bit so I make sure I don't come through the outside of my leather. All right, there we go. Tying through, no problem, plenty of depth. So let's work this out. Now, you'll notice too that came out pretty easy. Once we get some dye in our leather, it doesn't really add, well, it'll add a little body, but it adds some firmness there. So it makes it easier to pull this chisel out than it would say before we add dye. And again, keeping trying my best to keep this straight up and down this way, but also leaning in just a little bit. There we go. Chisel through again. All right, let's do one more, and then I'm gonna work my way around. There we go, okay? Let's look at the back. Might not be able to see that very well. There we go, okay, it's not bad. My, my chisel or my tine holes are in a pretty good line. So I'm gonna work my way all the way around, come back up to here. What's gonna happen is we're gonna have a beautiful stitch line, both front and back, that's the point. And there we go, our last chisel hole is in. Well, that looks pretty good, clean and straight. That little range mark is going to make me crazy, absolutely. Now, a couple of quick points before we jump over to sewing. Big holes. Notice our holes are now pretty big. That's okay. First off, that's going to help us when we sew. It's going to make it easier on our fingers getting a needle through there. But we're going to hammer our stitch line down when we're done sewing. That's going to be a visible change. Second point, round chisels, round handle on our chisels. I've never been a big fan of that because with this square handle, I can feel it, and the outcome is that my hole is in line and straight every time. Also, too, one more thing we could do, and I'm not a big fan of this, we could extend our shoulder one quarter of an inch up and bring it in, bring the transition to our strap from there. The problem is, is if we're gonna add one more loop to hold this down, somewhere along the way, we're not gonna be paying attention, and our knife is not gonna go straight in. What's gonna happen? It's gonna cut that thread, and that stitch line is no longer good. We'll either have to, in some way, just do a small loop, which will look terrible, or re-sew. But with that thread tucked in there, protected by our leather, it's never gonna be an issue. All right, let's step over here and add our stitch line in. 
Now, I try not to open every segment with this long list of rules or tricks or tips, but in this situation, we need to take a minute because there are all kinds of things we A, want to avoid, but B, again, tricks that are going to help us get a really clean stitch line, but also too, make it easy on our hands. That's a big point. So I've dropped in my welt cut again, just so when I put this in my horse, it doesn't bow it down, all right? We're going to try to take this one step at a time. Now, hand sewing needles. The biggest point here, first off, no sharp point. We've got our pre-punched soles. We don't need it. But secondly, we've got a nice big eye there that's going to take our wax thread, all right? Leads me to my wax thread. This is a great thread. I love it, and I use it everywhere. Here's the point. I'm going to take six times my length because right here, we're actually going more vertical than horizontal. That's really going to chew up some thread. But at the same time, I'm going to have a lot left over because I don't want to get down here and I have a two little nubs that I need to try to tie a knot with. But secondly, as our thread passes through these holes, it's going to pick up a little die. So therefore, if we have that on a long leader, no issue, we cut it off. But two, since we're going to use six times our length, that's a long piece of thread. So what I can do is simply choke up and then I can pay that thread out as I go so I don't have to go all the way out each stitch line, okay? Easy enough there. Now, for the stitch we're going to do, it's called a saddler stitch or a saddle stitch. In my opinion, it looks great, extremely strong. Now, again, in my opinion, stronger than a machine stitch because a machine is a lock stitch and we have that in every hole. One side breaks, we've seen it, we've all seen it. One side pops, the whole thing unravels. Impossible to do here. In fact, you can pop a stitch, may not even know it, all right? So with a saddler stitch, we're gonna go both needles at one time because I don't wanna sew down and back with one needle, back and forth. First problem is I'm not getting even tension and the way we're gonna do it, no worries. Secondly though, coming back, I run the risk of splitting a thread on every hole. The way we're gonna do it, Never even an issue. Okay, so let's do this. Now, I'm right-handed, but let's pretend I'm left-handed and you'll see why. I'm going to put my face to my prominent hand and I'm going to lead from that side because you notice the hole on this side where we punch, funnel-shaped, but on the back side, it actually puckers a little bit. So over here, if I lead from this side, the, lead, the needle literally falls in the hole, but also it's gonna slide right through. There we go, okay? So let's take this out, let's run that through, and then we're going to even out our thread. We're gonna uh, equalize that out, okay? First, first hole, one thread. You notice I've got a needle on both ends. Now, easy enough to remember. Second hole, what I'm going to do is lead from my face, <clears throat> excuse me, again, because that needle's gonna fall through. I'm gonna ream that hole open a little bit. I'm gonna take my other needle and go through at the same time, okay? With a standard project, it's pretty easy to push those needles through. Now we've got three ply. So what I can do, so I'm going to take my thumb and right at the end of my wax thread, I'm going to press down. That's going to bow that needle. But what that's going to do is I can actually use the force behind my wax thread to push the needle. It's going to miss the thread and me. Okay, big point. So now we can pull that through. Now, there we go. All right, let's give that a little tension. I can feel it. Give me some resistance, so let's stay right there. Next hole, lead from the face, drop that needle in from the back. There we go, okay? So sewing, not really as tedious as it would look. In fact, sewing this, probably only gonna take about 20 minutes. But let's do this, let's get a couple of stitches in here and take a look at it. Now, one more point too, let's get this up here. Sometimes it can take a little strength to get these needles through. If you don't have that strength in your hand, what you can do, let's lead from one side, pull that through, pull that a little bit tight, but you'll notice I'm gonna pull this way. So therefore, I know that hole is wide open. When this thread or that needle goes through, I don't run the risk of splitting that thread. Now I can add some tension. So if you don't have the strength in your hands to do two needles at one time, it is no issue, all right? Let's get one more through there. Boy, that looks great, okay. Well, very nice. That stitch line looks good, clean, consistent. On the back, same thing, just what we're looking for. All right, so I'm going to finish sewing this. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna flip this over to my right hand, panel facing my right since I lead with my right, and we'll get all the way around to the end. 
We're going to tie a cool little knot. It's going to be totally hidden right in that side. And our last hole, there we go. Well, second to the last hole. There we are. Now, what we want to do, notice, or remember on the back, we didn't glue all the way to the top. So, from the back side, what I want to do is come through my last hole, but I'm only going to come through one ply. All right, and on the front side, a little bit tougher, but we can do it. There we are. We're going to come through the front side there. Okay, let's pull that taut. Now, we're going to do a square knot. So all that is, I'm going to take my right thread, go over my left, circle around, and we're going to draw that down in there, okay? Second half of that knot, I'm going to take my left, go over my right, circle that down, there we go, right into the edge, look at that, that knot is totally hidden. Now to cut this, I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut the thread, let's see if we pull that, there we go, I don't want to cut the thread. What I'm going to do is lift the thread over the knife. There we go. Okay. Look at that. Well, I could not be happier with that sheath. Very cool. And our backside, nice stitch line there as well. And again, I, you know, it's going to make me crazy. All right. So let's pull this out. Now, beautiful thread, beautiful stitch line. But also, too, here's one more note kind of on more on a, des on a design level. We've got multiple colors in this thread. Think, say, if we have a little blue, a hint of blue or red in our knife handle, we could drop in a blue or red stitch line. Boy, that would really wrap that up. All right, let's step over here and hammer down our stitch line. Now, when we hammer down our stitch line, a couple of things are going to happen. First off, we've added a groove line. So when we hammer down our thread, it's going to sink down into that groove line, make it a little bit harder for that to snag or catch, right? Longevity there. But secondly, we're going to close down these holes. That nice large hole helped us when we're sewing, but we want to close that some. And third, it's going to spread that thread out a little bit, make it a little more white. So let's do this. Now, we can use a tack hammer. This is a great way to go. You can use a mallet if that's what you have. Just try to keep your angle at least shallow enough to where you're not leaving indentions or marks in the face of the leather. So let's just start right there. There we go. Okay, so we can see a noticeable difference in that thread. Close that hole down, sunk it in, and now it's a nice bright white. So I'm going to finish hammering this down, then we're going to step over here, and we're going to slick our edge. All right, there we go. Well, that looks great, too. Same on the back, nice, clean, white stitch line. All right, let's slick our edge, then just one more step, drop it in our snap and our strap, we're done. Okay, with our gum tragacanth, I'm going to take a dauber. This is a little gooey, so let's just daub a little bit on. Now, we've got a top coat, front and back, so if a little of this wraps around, it's not really going to be an issue. We can simply wipe that off. All right, let's get that in. That looks good. Okay, let's take a rag and just wipe, wipe off the excess. Front and back, very good. Now, we don't have in our shop a, a slicker that's going to cover three weights here. Now, I can use my shank because we've got a curved edge right there, or our tip, same thing. So I can work this back and forth. Now, again, pressure, not the point. I don't want to build a lip up across here, but also, too, I can always go with, say, something a little more like canvas, or this is sweatshirt material, and I can work this back and forth, start to get that down. But now I can actually cup that in my fingers. There we go, right on my edge. And now I can work that back and forth. That actually is going to give me a pretty good slick. So let's slick this side. Already starting to look good. I'm going to put gum trag on the other side, slick the whole thing, and let's see what it looks like. And working around our end, get that a little rounded. Well, that looks very good. All right, we've got a good slick going there. Now let's jump over to our belt loop, add some gum trag all the way around, and slick this down. And working our end, all right, there we go, back and forth. Well, how do we do there? Well, that looks good, too. Looks like we've got a good slick on our belt loop. All right, let's step back over to our quartz, knock in a couple of rivets and a snap, and we're done. Now, with this, three simple steps here. We're going to set our rivet first off. I'm using a double cap. It's the only rivet I use, and I love them. It's got a cap on the back, so very professional, but we've got a crimp in the post so that that's going to hold together without actually setting the rivet. That's very helpful when we're setting up a project 
to rivet. All right, let's jump out to the outside hole on our belt loop and set that. There we go, rivet setter, just a tube with a concaved end, okay? On this next end, went ahead and save us a little time. I punched a hole right in the middle of our strap. So let's drop a rivet in, face down, top grain down. We're gonna come up through this second or inside hole, see if I can find it, there we go. Nice, our pattern working out. We took our time there, okay? So let's snap that down, easy enough. And then we're gonna set that same way. All right, there we go, rivets are set. Now let's do this, let's take our knife, we're gonna drop this in the sheath. Ooh, nice fit, isn't it? Okay, we need to think about this. This is going to be on my right side. So therefore, this is going to be my outside strap and I'm gonna have a little tab on that. So over here, we're gonna use the outside of the, the snap, over here, the inside. So let's start right here, I'm gonna bring that around. Ooh, and look at that, good fit there as well. Let's make a mark right where we want our hole for the inside portion of our snap. And let's just drop a hole right there, okay? Now, to keep us from jumping back and forth to our, to our quartz over there, I've got just a small piece of cutting, um, cutting material here, cutting board. I'm gonna drop in a 5 8 inch round end punch. And I don't need that too much, too much further than the snap. There we go, let's trim that little corner off. There we are, okay? Let's jump over here to line 20 snaps. Now we've got post, we've got a cap and a back, and then we've got our two female pieces. Now we're gonna do it the way we normally can do it, but really if you get the two reversed, doesn't matter, these two pieces are gonna bite. All right, so with our back piece, what I wanna do is come in from the back side of my leather. There we go, if we think about that when we wrap it around, there we are, female out front, and then let's drop this in. Now. With line 20, line 24 snaps, the setters are size specific. So I'm going to drop the post of that, the, or the tip of my tool right into the post and just give that two easy pops. There we go. Okay, that has rolled around in there very nicely. All right, let's jump over to this side. We're gonna drop, in fact, I tell you what, let's put our knife back in our sheath. There we go. Bring that around and on our front side, Let's bring this out. We're gonna mark right over our snap there, okay. Let's punch a hole there. We've got just enough, I might change my pattern. We've got just enough there for a tab. Now on this side, we've got a cap. This is going to be outside, so my cap needs to be on the face. But also too, I need an anvil here so I don't crush that cap. Line 24, line 20, let's drop our female piece on same thing. There we go. Okay, rolled around in there nicely. Let's jump back over to our board. Now let's give it a little distance here. I'm gonna bring my tool right out to the end. There we go. Okay, that gives us some tab. That's going to work nicely. So let's drop our knife in again. Drop in our snap. And there we go. Our sheath is complete and to me, that looks fantastic. But it's not a perfect sheath, handmade. That's exactly the point. Now, I could have sanded a little bit more, but in all honesty, beautiful edge. Right here on our strap where we punched it, I'm gonna need a little bit of dye that's a little bit naked, but I can certainly do that. But here's the coolest part. Great fit, nice belt loop, very durable, cool design, and a gorgeous stitch line. Leather is just elements, and they are all easy to learn. When we break them down into chapters, nothing difficult. I hope every sheath you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.